Imagine waking up to a world in chaos where the dead walk and the living are in danger. Welcome to the first 48 hours of a zombie apocalypse. As dread and panic threaten to consume your every thought, it's crucial to remember the importance of keeping a level head. These initial moments of terror, they're overwhelming, yes, but they also hold the key to your survival. So amidst all this chaos, remember, stay calm, think clearly. In the face of such terror, one needs to stay calm and plan the next steps carefully. Your immediate priority, safety. Find a secure location, away from the hordes of the undead. And no, your favorite coffee shop won't cut it. We're talking about a place that's defensible, with multiple escape routes, and ideally somewhere away from populated areas. Why is location so important, you ask? Well imagine this. It's the first 48 hours of the zombie apocalypse. Chaos reigns. The undead are everywhere. And they're hungry. Your survival instincts kick in. You need to find a place to hide, to regroup, to plan your next move. That place is your fortress, your sanctuary, your home base. It's the first step towards surviving the apocalypse. So let's talk about what makes a good sanctuary. First, it needs to be defensible. You want a place that's easy to secure and hard for zombies to breach. Think high walls, sturdy doors, and minimal windows. You want to be able to see them coming but make it tough for them to get in. Next, your sanctuary should have multiple escape routes. You don't want to be cornered with no way out. A good sanctuary offers a variety of exits just in case the zombies manage to breach your defenses. Think back doors, underground tunnels, even rooftops. Location also matters. Cities and populated areas are a no-go. Remember, more people mean more zombies. Opt for a place that's remote yet accessible. A place where you can see danger approaching from a distance, giving you ample time to prepare or escape. Lastly, your sanctuary should have resources nearby. This could be anything from a natural water source to a nearby forest for hunting and gathering. Your sanctuary isn't just a place to hide, it's a place to live. Whether it's an abandoned farmhouse, a secluded cabin in the woods, or a fortified warehouse, your sanctuary is your lifeline in this new world. It's your first line of defense against the undead and your home base as you navigate the challenges of the apocalypse. So, take the time to find the right place, secure it, fortify it, make it your own. Remember, a safe haven is worth more than gold in this new world. Once safe, focus on gathering supplies. Food, water, medicine, and weapons, you'll need them all. Now, we're not talking about a quick trip to the grocery store here. This is about resourcefulness and making the most of what's around you. First up, food. You're going to need energy to stay on your toes, so aim for a balanced diet. Canned goods are a godsend. They're non-perishable, packed with nutrients and easy to store. But remember, variety is key. Try to find sources of protein, carbohydrates, and vitamins. Don't forget to keep an eye out for seeds too. They may not seem like much now, but in the long run, they'll be invaluable for growing your own food. Next, water. Hydration is essential to keep you going and clean water can be hard to come by. Collect as much as you can and remember to ration it wisely. If you find a source like a river or a well, guard it like it's gold. And always always purify your water before you drink it. Boiling, filtering, or using purification tablets can do the trick. Medicine is next on the list. A basic first aid kit is a must-have. Bandages, antiseptics, pain relievers, and antibiotics can be lifesavers. If you're lucky enough to come across a pharmacy, grab anything you can get your hands on. Even the most mundane items like tweezers or a thermometer can prove crucial in a pinch. Lastly, weapons. This isn't about starting a war, it's about defending yourself. Anything can be a weapon if you're creative enough. A baseball bat, a kitchen knife, even a sturdy shovel can keep you safe. Just remember, it's not about having the biggest weapon, it's about knowing how to use what you have effectively. Supplies are your lifeline, without them survival is just a word. So gather wisely, use sparingly, and always be on the lookout for more. Because when it comes to survival, you can never be too prepared. In this new world, a lone wolf doesn't stand a chance. You must form alliances. In the face of a zombie apocalypse, the adage united we stand, divided we fall, takes on a whole new level of importance. As the sun sets on the first 48 hours, it's time to shift focus from immediate survival to long-term resilience. This is where the power of alliances comes into play. Think of it this way, survival isn't a solo sport, it's a team game. Each member brings a unique skill set to the table, enhancing the group's overall survival capabilities. You might be a whiz at finding food, but what about medical emergencies, or building a secure shelter? Forming alliances fills these gaps, creating a well-rounded survival team equipped to handle anything thrown their way. 
Let's not forget the psychological benefits of companionship. Isolation can lead to despair, but having others to share the burden can keep morale high and foster hope. People who feel connected to others are more likely to stay motivated, more likely to fight, and more likely to survive. But remember, not all alliances are created equal. Trust must be earned, not given freely. The last thing you want is a traitor in your midst when survival is at stake. Take the time to observe potential allies. Are they reliable? Are they resourceful? Are they trustworthy? Your life could depend on these answers. Consider what each person brings to the table. A diverse mix of skills is essential. You'll need hunters, gatherers, builders, healers, lookouts, and leaders. Everyone has a role to play, and everyone must pull their weight. The formation of alliances is not a one-time event but an ongoing process. It requires constant communication, negotiation, and compromise, but the payoff is worth it. A strong unified group with a shared goal of survival. In the end, forming alliances is about more than just survival. It's about community. It's about rebuilding, starting with the bonds we form in the face of adversity. Remember, unity is strength. When there is teamwork and collaboration, wonderful things can be achieved. In times of chaos, establishing a routine can be your saving grace. In the midst of a zombie apocalypse, a routine isn't just a series of humdrum habits. It's a lifeline. It's a way to stay grounded, to maintain some semblance of order in a world gone mad. Think about it, without a routine, you're just reacting. You're running on adrenaline, making decisions on the fly, and that's when mistakes happen. But with a routine, you're in control. You're making conscious decisions about what needs to be done and when. Let's start with guard duty. It's critical to have a rotation in place so that everyone knows when it's their turn to keep watch. This isn't just about ensuring safety, it's about fostering a sense of responsibility and teamwork. Everyone contributes, everyone is invested. Then there's scavenging. You don't just rush out willy-nilly hoping to find food or supplies, you plan. You map out where you're going, you decide who's going and when. You set a time to return. This isn't a free-for-all, it's a mission. Cooking and mealtimes are just as important. Regular meals not only keep you physically strong but they also provide a sense of normalcy. Sitting down to eat, even if it's just a can of beans, can be a comforting ritual. And let's not forget rest. It's easy to push yourself to the brink of exhaustion, but that's a dangerous game. You need to be rested to stay sharp to make good decisions. So, factor in downtime. Allow time for sleep, for relaxation. Remember this is a marathon, not a sprint. In the face of chaos a routine might seem insignificant, but it's the little things that can make a big difference. A routine gives you structure, it gives you purpose. It helps you keep track of time to differentiate between day and night, yesterday and today. And perhaps most importantly, a routine can help maintain your sanity. It's a reminder of what life was like before, a hint of normalcy amidst the madness. A well-planned routine can be the difference between life and death. The undead are relentless, so too must be your vigilance. In the face of a zombie apocalypse, the importance of staying alert cannot be overstated. The world you once knew is now a ticking time bomb of potential threats and ever-changing circumstances. Staying vigilant not only keeps you alive but also gives you the upper hand in this treacherous new world order. Vigilance starts with keen observation. Keep a watchful eye on your surroundings at all times. Look for signs of the undead, changes in their patterns, or any unusual activities. If the leaves rustle in an odd way, or if you hear a twig snap, don't dismiss it. The smallest anomaly could be a sign of a lurking threat. Regular perimeter checks are a must. This is not a one-time task but a routine that needs to be as regular as your heartbeat. Every corner, every shadow, every possible entry point must be inspected and secured. It's a tedious task but it's your first line of defense against an unexpected zombie invasion. Surveillance is another key aspect of vigilance. It's not just about keeping an eye on the undead, but also on other survivors. In the wake of an apocalypse desperation can drive people to extreme measures. Establish a surveillance system to ensure that you are not caught off guard. Trust, but verify. Remember vigilance is not born out of paranoia, but out of necessity. It's about maintaining a state of readiness, always prepared to adapt and react. It's about foreseeing potential dangers and taking proactive measures to mitigate them. In the game of survival, complacency is your greatest enemy. The moment you let your guard down, you give the undead an advantage. You might have survived the first 48 hours or even the first 72, but remember survival is not a sprint, it's a marathon. As the old saying goes, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. 
in the case of a zombie apocalypse replace liberty with survival. Vigilance is the guardian of survival, never let your guard down. The first 48 hours are just the beginning, you must prepare for the long haul. When the world turns upside down and zombies roam the streets, it's not enough to just survive today. You have to plan for tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that. The initial chaos is terrifying but it's the long-term survival that really tests your mettle. Sustainable food and water sources aren't just nice-to-haves, they're essentials. You can't rely on scavenging canned goods forever. Start thinking about how to hunt, fish, or grow your own food. Rainwater collection or purifying techniques could become your lifeline when bottled water runs out. Fortifying your safe haven is another crucial task. It's not just about keeping the undead out, but also about making your space livable and defensible against potential threats from other survivors. Reinforce entrances, secure windows, and consider escape routes. And while it might feel like you've found the perfect spot, always be open to the idea of moving. If resources dwindle, if the horde gets too close, or if tensions rise within your group, a change of scenery might be your best bet. Remember in this new world, adaptability is as important as preparedness. Life has become an unpredictable game of chess and you need to think several moves ahead. Survival is not a sprint, it's a marathon. Always plan ahead. The first 48 hours of a zombie apocalypse will test you in ways you can't imagine. It's a crucible that demands calmness, a safe haven, vital supplies, strategic alliances, a sensible routine, and relentless vigilance. Planning for the long haul is not optional, it's necessary. These are not just steps but pillars of survival. Remember to stay calm, stay safe, and stay alive. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more survival tips. Till next time, stay vigilant.